After much consideration and consultation, the CIAC has made the difficult decision to cancel all remaining CIAC Winter Tournament games. The CIAC understands and appreciates the disappointment that student athletes, parents, coaches, and administrators may feel as a result of this decision. However, we must always place the health and safety of our student athletes first. Due to, a con con due to continuing concerns regarding the spread of COVID-19, the responses from local school districts and third-party venues have varied greatly. Some districts have informed us that they can no longer participate in our tournaments. Others have informed us that they can continue to participate without any fans in attendance. Still others have communicated that they can participate with less than 100 people in attendance. Additionally, we have been notified by several of our third party and neutral site venues that they can no longer host our events. Given the great variety of information that our districts are receiving from their local departments of health, and from declining resources to hold neutral site games. We feel that it's important that the CIAC give direction to our schools regarding the, the, the logistics of athletics. The CIAC, again, with always placing the interest of our students first, feel at this time the best use of our uh, membership's time is to focus on the educational needs of our students. There are a lot of unknowns that still exist about COVID-19 within Connecticut. This has just begun here, and so we don't know exactly how far this will spread. But when we consider the best action that we can take to address the needs of our schools, we feel that uh, we should give them the opportunity at this point to focus on the educational needs of our students. We understand at this time that schools have used delayed opening schedules or other methods to meet to discuss distance learning, as well as other options in the, need that, in the event that schools need to close and that's where those attentions should be. At the CIEC, we pride ourselves in being an education-based athletic experience for kids. We do the best we can to provide our kids with those exceptional experiences. And it's difficult to say to seniors and to others that they won't be, have the opportunity to finish these tournaments. But we do believe it is what is in the best interest of all of our membership and the schools in Connecticut to have that directive from us. We appreciate everybody coming out today, and I'm happy to take any questions that I can from you. Glenn, uh, what happened between yesterday when you posted that press release, the updated press release, and today to make this decision? Thanks, Dan. Yeah, our, uh, the press release that we sent out yesterday that we were moving forward with the tournaments, we clarified in there as well that this would be a day-to-day -day, uh, decision and, and that we would be reevaluating. Uh, from the... Uh, the beginning of this week, we had set with our staff a standing 9 a.m. meeting uh, to review information that we have, as well as guidance that was coming in uh, from the governor's office and the State Department of Education. Uh, I would also, <clears throat> at this time, like to, uh, again, just uh, thank uh, the Commissioner of Education, uh, Miguel Cardona, who has done an exceptional job communicating <clears throat> with CAS as well as uh, other educational uh, associations and for the inclusion yesterday on the governor's uh, phone call at 5 o'clock uh, with state leaders yesterday. And hearing the discussions from superintendents that were on that call, as well as members of the Department of Public Health, and taking those factors into consideration at today's 9 a.m. meeting with our staff, uh, we felt it was best to give this direction to our schools. Was there new information you received, though? The newest information was that uh, the varying responses from uh, local departments of health of, of how to apply the guidance from the governor's office regarding uh, events with less than 100 people. And, you know, again, the, wh everything that was, that's been shared thus far from the governor's office and, and, to my understanding, from the State Department of Education are guidelines and guidance. None of that was uh, directives of, of what to do. When we consider that, you know, we're, we're dealing with, uh, with 180 plus member schools and they're all relying on guidance from their local districts that at times can place our membership at conflicts. For example, we may have one school heading to a tournament game where their local Department of Health says it's okay to have less than 100 people. We may have the school that they're playing say you can't play an event if there's any fans in attendance. And so, you know, that, that there's that possibility for 
uh, for conflicting guidelines. That's where we felt it was important for us uh, to take the initiative of, of give a directive of how to handle this uh, for our schools. So uh, shutting down in our, our tournaments we saw as the clear direction and guideline that was into the best interest and places the focus on the students' educational needs where it should be at this time. There are a lot of uh, angry people right now. Uh, Glenn, um, what would you stress to them or what would you say to them um, about the, this unprecedented move by this organization? Yeah. Thank you, Sean. I know, uh, again, I, I don't think anything uh, brings out the emotion more in people than, than athletics. And I think it's one of the great values of athletics that, that we have is we are able to tie in uh, to those emotions with people. And for our student athletes, uh, that's what drives them uh, to, to make really meaningful relationships with their coaches, their peers, uh, and, and others even on, on other teams. It's, it's that emotion that drives that. And so uh, when you are put in a situation that you're told you, you can't play, uh, we certainly respect and understand that, that those hurt feelings and, and those emotions of, of anger are going to be there. Uh, what we need to do is try to keep the perspective of what our opportunities in education-based sports are about. And while playing for, for a state championship is, is certainly something that people always strive for at the end, when we think about the value of education-based athletic, it truly lies in developing those relationships and having those times together that creates a connection to school and community. None of our student athletes have lost that, and they, they have all gained those. And, uh, you know, again, it, what exists today may change by the end of the day. You know, we don't know how this is going to impact us within Connecticut. What may seem as a very bold and unprecedented move right now by the end of today or tomorrow uh, may very well be the direction that that comes depending on how many more cases uh, are, are confirmed within Connecticut. So we certainly appreciate those emotions that, that people are feeling and we respect that. Uh, but again, we, we do believe that this is what is best for, our, uh, for all of our schools and communities uh, throughout Connecticut right now. Any thoughts towards spring yet or we haven't even crossed that bridge yet? Um, we've crossed it. We, we, at this time, we are not changing anything uh, with spring. Uh, with spring, we will have pitchers and catchers that are starting, which is minimal uh, people at, at best who are going to be uh, participating, so we're not touching that. And at this time, I don't have uh, any guidance regarding uh, outdoor activities. You know, So the big difference that I think we see between the winter uh, and the spring is boys' volleyball is the only spring sport that is held in, indoors. And we're more than a month away from, from games in that. So at this point, we are not restricting the start of spring ports. Th those are all in outside venues, but we will continue to uh, speak with the Department of Health and, uh, and the State Department of Education uh, to see if any further guidance comes forward on those events. And that would probably also be impacted if schools decide to close. Glenn, okay. there are schools that came forward and specifically said, we cannot, we are going to forfeit going forward? There are several school districts that came forward and said, and said they wouldn't play. Uh, we were notified of the first yesterday that uh, that they would play yesterday, but uh, if they won moving forward, they, they wouldn't. And there were a few others that have joined that uh, today that they would not be able to play moving forward. Um, we we had a great uh, you know long discussion about that uh, this morning to uh, to look at that. But again, uh, as we had that discussion. Uh, what we quickly realized is that guidance was, was varying from uh, local district to local district where some could play with no fans, some could play with, uh, with 100 fans or less. Some don't have any you know, restriction yet. Uh, you know, and I think the, the difficult choice for, for us as well is to you know, consider uh, you know, the, the decision we're making while there's also you know, colleges and universities making decisions. So, um, you know, U UConn may, may still be, be playing games. The NCAA, you know, may, may still be playing games. But, uh, you know, again, we, we are focused and concerned with uh, what gives the clearest direction uh, to our member schools. And the clearest direction that we can give is, is to uh, make this move as, as a state. Okay. Lori. Um, that conversation we'll have to have with the New England Council uh, and the Executive Director of, uh, of New England's. Um, 
it's uh, we haven't had that that conversation yet. But dance is also in that scenario. Uh, the uh, the venues where where dance was supposed to be held uh, informed New England that they couldn't hold it. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I think that we'll see with some of those New England championships, the same type of, uh, of thing happening. But uh, I haven't had an opportunity to speak with the executive director of the New England Council yet. We'll be doing that this afternoon. Are those the only two sports that are impacted in New England? I believe so. I think everything else is – I don't know if the open wrestling – does anybody know if the New England wrestling is done? done? Wrestling's done, yeah. <laughs> Uh, swimming, the, the swimming championships as well, yeah. So it'll be gymnastics, dance, and swimming. So. You mentioned uh, that different venues stepped forward and said they couldn't host a new Ingalls Rink and Webster and other places, Mohegan Sun. I mean, are those the facilities that approached you? Yeah. Um, now, I, we're looking at, um, you know, we start holding neutral site games from our quarterfinals and on, and those include uh, both local schools and high schools as well as uh, colleges, universities. Um, I would say that uh, they have all been uh, very open to, to discussions as well. Uh, with us, we have been in constant communication the last uh, you know day or two with uh, with Yale. Uh, Mohegan Sun has just been phenomenal to to work with and talk through uh, through this with. So um, you know, again, none of this was made um, because of, of any direction from from one group, and and some of those groups were willing to. Uh, continue to stay open. Some of those were willing to try to find ways to host without uh, without fans there. Uh, but but it's really trying to provide uh, clear direction uh, for all when you have so many different points of view that led us to this decision. How many games were left that were scheduled that are now canceled? That's a big number. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know the exact number of games, but I could tell you our um, our hockey and boys basketball tournaments. Um, are all in the first round. Uh, so, uh, you know, so there, there's a number, uh, a lot of games left to be played there. Our girls' basketball tournament in one side of the bracket, we are done with the quarterfinals, but in the other side of the bracket, we're at the uh, quarterfinals. And in boys swimming, we have not held a divisional uh, meet yet. So, um, you know, there there were a lot of events that, that, were, that were left to be played. And the, you know, the likelihood of getting to those championships next week uh, and next weekend, you know, are, are probably slim when you consider the, the guidance that's coming from the, the governor and the State Department at this point. And no briefing later on, are you guys talking about, you know, rescheduling these games for later on in the year? Stuff? We're not thinking of rescheduling for the winter tournaments uh, at this point. You know, we do think that, um, you know, we'll, we'll lose some of that momentum. Um, uh, we have so many athletes in Connecticut that are multi-sport athletes, which is great to see, and, and a lot of those will be on to their uh, spring teams and spring seasons. So to try to uh, to fit those tournaments in while at the same time playing spring sports uh, would be very difficult. Uh, we did get some brief consideration to uh, the end of the year, you know, in uh, in June, but same thing at, at that point. You know, I think you have uh, people that, that are playing with outside organizations and AAU teams and club teams that uh, there would just be too many conflicts to, to make it logistically possible. Thanks. How many students do you think are, how many student athletes are affected, do you think? Um, you know, that's uh, it's a good question. Uh, um, you know, we have, so in, in basketball, again, boys basketball thinking just starting that tournament, so you know, with about, uh, you know, figuring about 12 kids uh, per, per team in, uh, in boys basketball, you know, you, you have a pretty significant uh, number there. Same thing with, uh, you know, with swimming. I mean, you, you have swim teams that could have over 100 kids on the swim teams. You know, having that swim practice exceed, might exceed the, uh, the 100 person requirement. So, um, you know, girls basketball, we're down a little bit because that tournament starts a little bit sooner. So, uh, so being in the semis in one bracket and in the quarters of, of another, there's not as many in girls basketball who are affected. But it's, it's, a, it's a significant number uh, of student athletes that unfortunately won't have, you know, that, that opportunity to uh, see that, that season complete the way that maybe they hoped it would. Yeah, talk to the governor. Um, I was part of the governor's phone call last night, but I have not had any uh, individual conversations with the governor or the governor's office. No. What was his take on the phone call last night? 
Uh, it was really just an update uh, about what uh, what is happening within the state, how the response team is uh, is working at this point, and you know the best guidance around athletics was for school districts to work with their local uh, departments of public health to uh, to take their guidance on it. Yeah, and I think Jeff uh, have a question. Yep, go ahead, Jeff. Sure. Um, and again, we, we certainly understand and appreciate uh, the, the emotion that that sports brings and uh, do take into account that there are seniors that uh, we're looking forward to to that um, that last game, looking forward uh, to, to making that that run to the championship. And, you know, to them, they they certainly get hit with news now that uh, that they're not going to have. Uh, the ability to to do that and you know we respect and understand uh, how difficult that can be uh, for those student athletes as well as their their parents and and others uh, but again to them you know I, I would encourage them to to think about uh, what they have been able to accomplish and what they have been able to uh, to realize not only this year but throughout their their playing career and oftentimes when you look back on this uh, it, it's rare that, that you look back on, uh, I think, a specific uh, moment or championship. I think you look back and what you appreciate down the road is the relationships that, that you've developed and, and those times that you've shared with your, with your peers and your friends. Uh, you know, I say that from, from a standpoint of I, I was fortunate enough to, to win a national championship in college. Uh, playing baseball for Eastern Connecticut State University. Uh, and when I think back at the times and the best times that I had on that, you know, it, it's, it's not necessarily the championship that I remember the most, but it's, it's the practices, it's the time that I spent uh, with my teammates. So, you know, as they look back on this in the, in the future, um, I think they will appreciate that more. Uh, but certainly today, uh, I understand that, that emotion and that impact to feel that that was taken from them. Um, to, to my knowledge, uh, we have not uh, canceled a, uh, a tournament in the past. Um, you know, we're, uh, we'll be ce celebrating our centennial celebration next year. Uh, so, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, looking back of 100 years of CIAC in times of, uh, of war, conflict, things like that, if there was ever a suspension uh, to, uh, to athletic events, uh, there, there may have been, but I would say this uh, this at this time is is unprecedented and not truly understanding and knowing the extent to which COVID-19 exists in Connecticut as well as uh, what that impact can be. Lori. We did speak with other state associations to see and um, you know in, in Connecticut uh, we're running a little bit later uh, than, than others. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, states around us are either completing their championships this week, completed them last week, um, or so you know they're they're in positions that they were able to to get things uh, done without you know the the concern of this. Uh, there are some states around us as well that go a little bit longer uh, than we are, and they are in constant communication with their state association, their uh, state departments of ed. Uh, as we are uh, to this to my knowledge to this point we're the first state that has uh, canceled our tournaments uh, as a result uh, of this but again my my concern in looking at it is meeting the needs of our uh, membership and who we serve here in in Connecticut and doing what we feel is in the best interest of our kids anything further I know you're not sure about the um, spring games yet, but um, when would that start? Um, when would the spring games start up? So they, the practice is for the spring season. They start as early as Saturday with uh, pitchers and catchers for baseball starting Saturday. Um, practices will begin 
uh, within the next two weeks for all spring sports. And I believe the first date of uh, competition for spring sports is around April 4th or 5th, in, uh, somewhere in that first week of, of April. So is that going to be a day-to-day -day decision, whether or not you're still going to have those practices? Um, it'll, be, it'll be something that we review, um, I would say, on a weekly basis right now. Uh, looking forward, we're not going to – uh, ask schools to not have um, practices at this point. We're going to leave that to local school decisions. But as we come closer to the uh, to the start of the season, uh, I think we do need to evaluate if any schools have shut down, um, how that impacts uh, players uh, being ready from a uh, a physical standpoint. We do have guidelines of the number of practice days that student athletes have to. Uh, participate in before they can play in their first contest. Uh, so we would need to look at um, how schools have been able to meet that standard uh, before playing and whether any adjustments would need to be made to games or game schedules. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, as you said, we, we don't sanction that, so we don't have any uh, authority over that uh, at this point. So that would be up to uh, local schools or to the group that, uh, that handles uh, girls' hockey. But um, we, d we don't sanction it, so we don't have any control over that. 